So, welcome to another war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at something a bit different from what we usually do. Uh, this is a miniatures based game. Um, it's called Aeronautica Imperialis, and it's from Games Workshop. And it is aerial combat in the 41st millennium. So, and this it is, is. It's very good. <laughs> very fun. So, it's set in the mm. Warhammer 40k kind of universe. And. Basically, this is ship-to-ship -ship aerial tactical combat. Mm -hmm. So think of things like, um, I, what's it, X-Wing, mm -hmm. Star Trek, well, Wings, Star of, Glory Trek, Wings from of Glory, that it's, kind of thing. It's Yeah, this is, uses a very different system to those, mm -hmm. uh, but it's that style of game, right? You have a number of ships that are worth a number of points. You build your little army, make a little list, and then it's a two-player tactical game. We fight off against each other in a number of scenarios. Uh, so this is just a review of the core game, yeah. because y this game is expandable, they do have some big box sets of all this other stuff that you can get for it, and they a big campaign book, but we've not played that. Um, this core box is very reasonably priced, considering you get four Imperium planes, which I think is two Marauders and two um, Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts, I believe, and then you get four... Uh, orc um, darker jets and two um, orc fighter bombs. So you get a decent amount of miniatures and these miniatures are super nice. Yeah, they're really great. And they're a pretty decent size compared to your hand. Yeah. I think these are boo -boo. a little Sorry. smaller than mm -hmm. uh, probably smaller than 144 scale but I don't know exactly. They're actually very detailed too. Yeah, it's and that's what you should and will expect from Games Workshop. Yeah. Their miniatures are, if nothing, very detailed, and crisp lines, everything's molded really well. I put these together, the instructions are really good, but it's and there's a bunch of different variations and models that you can make out of each one, so mm -hmm. that's nice. It's a nice little hobby aspect, and you can paint them however you want, all that kind of stuff. So I like that, and that's always a big draw mm -hmm. for me with this kind of stuff. But then, how does the game play? Is it a good game? Is the other question, right? Because as nicely as I can paint all these... Yeah, yeah. Is I, it, I think is it fun to play? I think actually you could you could just get this to collect the minis, paint them, put them on your shelf, and play with them. Yeah. But th there's actually a really good game here. Yeah. I think the game is, you know, it's that it, it's ship to ship. So it's you know you're not doing a wing or a formation. It's one ship versus one ship. You might have you know three or four ships on a side. But it's that concept of, I don't know what you're going to do, and you don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. You blindly choose from a menu of, and here they are, it's called it's the movement diagram. Each different plane has a certain number of these that they have access to. And you have, and each one of these, if you look, they're corresponding, each maneuver has a number, and yeah. you have this pool of numbered tokens, yeah. and you face down, assign them to each yep. one of your planes. Oh, I'm going to take a whatever it's called, stoop move, and then I'm just going to do a, a level flight with that guy. And what I like about this one is you don't know if you're going to get to go first. Mm -hmm. So in a game like X-Wing, where you're, you go based on your pilot skill, yeah. you can bring the best pilot to the table and know that you're going to go first. Or you're going to fly last. It, in X-Wing. Right? Yeah. This one, you assign everything, and then you roll a dice for initiative, mm -hmm. highest die roll wins. So it, it makes the risk of taking a gamble mm -hmm. that extra bit more because you might not be able to maneuver or yeah. you might be gambling on waiting to see what they're going to do before you do something. Mm -hmm. and that, that You get into some neat little choices based on that. Well, and the great thing about winning the initiative with the roll-off is you can decide to go first yeah. or you can force the other guy to go first. Going first, is my, in my opinion, is almost never a good thing. For movement. For movement. But if you go first in movement... You then have the option of firing first. Yes, and which that is always be, an advantage. Yeah, that, that's a huge advantage. So that's an interesting, I think it throws an interesting... I love how those are tied together. Yeah, I yeah. think because you have to make a real big choice, move first or attack first. Yeah. Sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes it's like, oh. Well, and, and it really boils down to, you know, are you in position or do you believe you're going to be in position yeah. to fire first? Because there's times we were a great distance apart, and I'll be honest, it's a very small map. It's yeah. like 15 hexes wide by 15, maybe it's 14 by 14. So it's you're on each other pretty quick. So I, I don't yeah. know that there's a lot of that long-range maneuvering. 
it's really you're on each other pretty quick. I do think this game is designed for the long range stuff. The okay. rules are like a big game will be played on an eight foot by four foot table, right? Which has a two inch hex grid overlay. Yeah. That would be awesome, right? That yeah. would be awesome. You got ten guys aside, yep. flying these big maneuvers and doing some crazy stuff. What you get in the box is this little three by three type thing. Yeah. It's I don't even know if it's that, it's probably two by two. Yeah. But uh it's this small little map, and it's very, very tight, and it's, yep. and it's this little dogfight, and it's very yeah. bloody very quickly. And that's why, I mean, yeah. it, it, there's not a lot of a lot of times where I felt like going, you know, first was so critical, because um, I felt like we were on top of each other from the very get-go. Yeah. And, and the game was, was slated to be 12 rounds. I think we ended up playing five. Well, a game, five, any game, no, no matter more the than size, 12. will be no more than 12 So rounds. a larger map might have, with more units, would have would have went longer. But once again, it boils down to, I thought we were on each other pretty, pretty yeah. quick. The dice rolling isn't necessarily that great. You, you know, you roll five or six dice, and you got to roll a five or sixes. And more often than not, based on some negative modifiers for altitude, altitude difference, difference, you know, you're going to have to roll a six. Yeah. So it, it's pretty hard to hit. And then when you hit, you then have to kind of confirm... Or penetrate, yeah, and because it, yeah, some of the shots do, roll to do damage, that's right? Very Warhammer, because it says some of the shots go through the plane and they don't do anything, right? They don't hit any serious arteries, or you know, yeah. um, so you got to penetrate, and then you got to. So I, it, it's interesting, it's bloody, it's right on top, it's fast. That's what I like about this. Yeah, it, you know, sure, it would be nice to have a map that was double the size that they include in the box, but they don't. But it means that this is a quick and dirty game, yes. a little skirmish game. You set it up, you play it, does not take very long nope. at all. Um, and then you set it up, play it again. Yeah. play it again. You have, have a good time with it. That's, yeah. I think that's what this core box is designed to do. And yep. if you want to, you can then give Games Workshop lots of money. And, and, get, and get more. Because <laughs> yeah. they have like you know this, these big box sets where you get like right. a massive fleet and this huge map and all these nice dice mm -hmm. encounters. But that's, you know, if that's what you want to do, absolutely yeah. go for it. This is a game that's probably worth doing that if you like this kind of game. Right. I, uh, for, at the moment, 2020, there's only two factions that I can find on their website. And it's still Orcs, Orcs and Imperium. And you just kind of get more, you can get more variations for the different subtypes of bombers, yeah. fighters, and bits and pieces. But, uh, you know, you can go that route <clears> or you can just buy this. Quick yeah. little skirmish game. Models look great. And this is fairly satisfying for the price that yeah. you're paying for it, too. Well, and, and one other tactical note, you know, you, you have different fields of fi firing arcs. Yep. Some some planes have them on the side, like the orc bombers. Yeah, he can shoot out of the yeah, side. Yeah, shoot out of the side. Some can shoot in front and back. You know, and, and you got to keep that in mind at all times. And that's what I find interesting. Now, I found it hard with this to really remember... <laughs> All the stuff. They so, didn't have great player aids. They see, didn't have any player aids, really. These players uh, were fantastic. Very good. Very good. Um, but yeah. The, With so the movements and the, the unit, rules. The unit reference cards, um, they don't include them in the game. Yeah. It's printed in the manual. Which so you could photocopy it's there, it. but like you had yeah. to ask me every time. What if I'm at five do. range, yeah. what's my best weapon? You know, so so that was something I I thought, and and we maybe we could just go ahead and print those out or copy yeah, them off, or or you can buy the cards separately. Well, yeah, that's that spend more money. Yeah, but that's <clears throat> that's the own that's the drawback of this set is you don't get those, so hmm. you you got to either write it down or make some copies of what you're going to do with the different weapon systems that you have, your mm -hmm. arcs of fire and any auxiliary bombs and rockets you might have given yourself that kind of right. stuff. So there's that's the, the only thing that I had a major quibble with as well. Yeah. I had to remember my stuff annual stuff. <laughs> yeah. And here's another concept I think these games are so well set up for, but not many not many games do it. I've always wanted to see like a customization. You know, like for a certain amount of points, I can add a type of a gun or I can take off a type of a gun. Or, yeah. You know, it, it would make it more complex. It would make it less easy to understand what your opponent can and cannot do. So this does that to a, in a limited role. So your your main fixed guns that are in your wings and, and on your fuselage, those are fixed. Yeah. But your your weapon, like your missiles and rockets, yeah. usually you've got a choice of one or two, sometimes three for the big ones. But it's, right. it's the difference between two different types of bombs if you're doing a ground attack yeah. and whether or not you carry air-to-air -air missiles. So there's... A little bit, but mostly 
it's you're making that decision before you put your models together whether you or not it. you're going to make a regular thunderbolt or a thunderbolt fury mm-hmm. that changes your inherent you know your cannons and things like that yeah that's the major difference which once you've put them together you can fudge it but whether or not that's totally legal is a different question got it so but a fun game had a great time with it and enjoyed the experience of you know trying to guess what you're going to do and plan out what i'm going to do yeah what it's, I'll, it's a good time <laughs> what i'll do i'll show you a little bit of how it works it's not complicated and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts So here's a look at the map, and this is just um, what comes in the game. This is a small little kind of a three by three, uh, and the game can be played up to like a, I think they said like an eight by four. You get into the really big games, you can play at conventions, if you've got, <laughs> who's got an eight foot table, right? Uh, Warhammer players do, so that's why it's kind of marketed towards that. But, uh, you know, you could, if you've got a hex, it's two inch hexes, and that's regulated, because it matches the size of the bases. If you fill your whole table, you can play some pretty big games. Uh, and why I say that is, is on a space like this, they really recommend it's, you know, really one or two planes a side, just because this is quite tight parameters to work within. Um, and it, you can still do everything that you can in the game, but if you have those bigger games, you can be a bit more dynamic with some of the larger formations and maneuvers that you might want to do when you've got like five or six uh, units on the board. Um, so that's that's just something that, you know, you, with this core game, you get this small space. We played with, I think I had like four and he had three. Uh, and so it, it, was, it was very cluttered. Uh, it makes for a very fun and quick game because everyone blows each other up real quickly. But that's... You know, it, it, this isn't the optimum play situation for all of the guys that you get in the box. Because I think you get five orc planes and... Th- is it four? Yeah, I think it's four um, uh, Imperium ones. The models are beautiful. They look fantastic. I'm tooting my own horn because I've painted these up and made them all look nice. And, I, you know... You can go as wild on the paint schemes and all that stuff as you want. That's just the hobby aspect. I love it, so it was really easy for me to do that. But even if you didn't paint, the sculpts are great, and they, they would look just fine if you just you know glued them together. They, they wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, but the game itself, really, really simple. Um, this is one of the best play aids I've ever seen. There's one thing missing from here that I would like, and that is just a range reference. Basically, there's three range bands, short, medium, and long. Short is 1 to 4 hexes, medium is 5 to 7 hexes, and long range is like 8 to 10 hexes, something like that. That's the only thing, but you memorize it just like I did very, very quickly. Uh, everything else is really good. I had the rule book and was re- learning the rules. Grant basically just looked at this and knew all the rules of the game. Uh, so, I-, I appreciate that. The game is quite... Uh, if you've played any of these style games where it's flying, tactical miniatures, things like X-Wing or BSG... This ha- you, you'll find some similar uh, concepts. Instead of having range rulers and bits and pieces, obviously everything's regulated by a hex grid. Uh, and what you have is you have this chart, which is on the back of this, like I said, amazing blade. This chart shows you the different maneuvers that you can make and the positions you can end up and what facings you have. Based on your speed, which is on the little dial here, you have speed and altitude. That'll tell you how far it is before you can or can't do any of these things. So... That there's an interplay between those two, but the game works in a number of phases. What you do is you have a number of these uh, tokens that have numbers on them, 1 through 8, and these have values 1 through 8 assigned to them. So you're going to face down, place those, and that's assigning what it is that they're going to do in the flight phase. Uh, and then you don't know whether or not you're going to go first. So after you assign all those, then you roll for initiative, which is just everyone rolls a d6, and the, well, when it's a tie, you roll again. So whoever rolls a six, they get to choose who goes first. And everyone does their moves, then everyone does their fights. Uh, but you do it, um, I go, you go. So if I choose myself to go first, I'm going to move one of my planes, then you're going to move one of your planes. I'm going to move one of my planes, you're going to move one of your planes, and so on. And then when it gets to the shooting, 
because I chose myself to go first, I will do, I get the first shot, then you get one shot, then I get one shot, you get one shot. Real simple like that. So that decision about when to move first and when to fight first is quite interesting because those are linked. Usually moving first is a disadvantage and usually shooting first is an advantage. So you can never get both of those. Uh, and that's something I particularly enjoyed about this. You don't have like an ace that's just better than everyone. Um, that has its place in games, but this one it gets a bit more balance in that sense, and I think that's pretty neat. I, I liked the choice. That's a really tough choice to have to make if you get the initiative of whether to go first or not. It's not just meaningless. It, it, it's quite, uh, it can mean quite a lot. Um, when you shoot, you reference um, all your weapon systems, and I presume that they have uh, these aircraft data cards and weapon systems as separate cards that you can get. Those aren't included in this box, which is a shame. I would have liked to see those, but they don't have them. So, I, you know, I had to keep referencing the, the, this manual. And this tells you, you know, if you've got all these last cannons and, and uh, thunderbolters and things, tells you the number of dice you roll at range increments, if you hit your damaged penetration rolls, and then if you've got auxiliary weapons like uh, missiles and rockets and bombs and things like that, it has those uh, factors there. But basically, it's, it's kind of a bucket of dice game. Uh, for example, here at medium range, he's going to roll seven dice. Uh, and because we're at equal altitude, it's just a straight five plus to hit. So here we've got four hits. That was a six. So we've got four hits. What we're going to do is we're going to confirm the damage that those hits do. And these particular guns uh, that the Thunderbolt Fury has, um, they hit, so we rolled uh, seven dice, we need a four plus to do damage with them. Otherwise it's just kind of glancing shots. So we're going to roll four dice, and we need a four plus to do damage. So these two, uh, basically superficial damage, do nothing. These two are hits. This guy only has a structure value of two, he can take two hits. So he's basically blown out of the sky, and that's 16 points to the opponent. If it's their last chip, you win, there's no one left. Um, but that's that's how the combat works. It's it's you shooting back and forth. The range increments are really really important. So for example, here we've got the uh, in the darker jet. They have at close range they roll eight dice. At medium range they roll four, and at long range they roll zero. But they only confirm damage on a five plus. So they roll lots of dice, but it's hard to actually do a lot of damage. Whereas the Thunderbolt Fury rolls three dice at close range. So it's not very many dice, but it needs a 4 plus to confirm. Their sweet spot is at medium range, because again, at long range, they do nothing. And the same with the, the air-to-air -air missiles. Can't be fired at close range. You can fire them at medium or long range. You roll far fewer dice, only 2, but they hit on a 3 plus, they do damage. So they, they can be very, very good. But it's this risk-reward about what weapon system you're using. You have firing arcs like you would in any game, so the positioning is very important. But that's that's really the core of the game. You're, it's making a good pilot's going to make good use of the maneuvers. Uh, you're going to adjust your speed uh, based on what the maneuvers, you know, what you're trying to do. So let's say you'd issued an order to do a level flight. You're going to move forward four space or three spaces because he's got a little tiny, tiny three there. One, two, three, and then you can turn this way, this way, or this way if you want, and that's it. Or you can you can do your maneuver at any point during that. So you can go one, turn, two, three, or you can go one, two, three. You have options about if and when you do the actual the maneuver part. Oh, I got it upside down. How about that? So you can get into some movements and some snap turns and some really neat um, kind of swinging maneuvers as you kind of bank and turn. This stuff is very fun to explore and play around with uh, within the limitations of what your aircraft can do. It's very cool. Um, the aircraft have all these nice nuances between them. So these little uh, DACA jets are basically just, it's a rocket with wings, that's all they are. So they can have a max speed of like 8, so they can zoom across the map. Uh, whereas these guys have a speed of like, I think it's like 5, like 2 to 5 or something like that. So they're a bit slow, a bit more controlled. These guys are zipping around, but they have far fewer hit points. Um, these guys can only utilize maneuvers one through five, whereas these guys can utilize maneuvers one through six. So this kind of a maneuver is totally off limits to this guy. Uh, this guy over here, he's a fighter bomber. 
he can utilize, uh, I think, one, two, three. That's all he can do, so he's not very maneuverable. But this guy has side arcs. He can shoot, basically, something at everyone around him. So that's an inherent power that they've balanced by having it less maneuverable, less quick, um, it has a lower altitude maximum. Really neat stuff like that. Uh, without being overly crunchy. I think the only, the crunchiest part of this game is if you exceed your altitude or you um, go below your minimum speed, even if you do it by accident, which sometimes happens, uh, you have an option to stall out. You roll a die to see if you stall out, and if you do, you go into like a spin and you might crash and die of your own mistakes. So Make sure you're paying attention to your altitude and speed with what maneuvers you're making and things like that. That's quite important in this one. But it's it's a fun little game, and what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map, uh, and it's just a little bit of how the pieces work. Really, not a complicated game. Not at all. I mean, the rule book is quite thick. It is. It's It looks daunting, but it's... Pretty digestible. It's small, there's not much writing on each page, yep. and half the book is taken up with unit data and like scenarios, scenarios and yep. pieces. Even though there's only one scenario that's included in the game. Got it. <laughs> but it's really very quick to learn. You almost learned the entire game off of this play. Yeah, it was very... Uh, that's why you we were reading the rules together, and I'm like, hey dude, it's right here. He's like guessing the rules hey, dude, before it's right I'm reading here. them. Please, let's just stop reading the rules. They're right here. So that, that's, that's really impressive. A huge credit to the game yeah, that, they, yeah. that they've done that. Now, now they, they could have gone one step further and put kind of those unit data cards at the bottom, but or yeah. on the backside and give me another piece of, new piece of paper. But yeah, very, very well done. That's, and the rules were clear. I thought they were very clear. Yeah, there was nothing that we had to look up or was no. confused about. And and that's that's a huge deal. If if you're yeah. buying a skirmish game in a box, I want to be able to play it. So this one allows me to do that. I can Absolutely. whip it out, stick the models together, boom, and I'm playing already. Well, and the way that the games go, it's, you you can play one in 30 minutes. I mean, you if yeah. you know what's going on, you can slap your numbers down, you can make your rolls, you can do it, and... They can end in 30 minutes, or they may take an hour. So you can play a couple of these in an evening and have a good time. And we had a great time. And it looks great. Like, yep. that's, I'm a sucker for things that look great on the table, miniatures and all right. that kind of stuff. I've put these little paint schemes on them. I yep. love it. So playing, and I've always loved aerial combat, mm -hmm. you get, you know, um, some <clears> things <throat> abstracted, like the... Uh, altitude is just a number on your dial, yeah. speed's a number on your dial, but it affects where you can go. But it's it's this, you know, rock and sock and robots. You just shoot each other to death. Yeah. Because it's such a tight, small map that you get in the box. Yeah. That's fun. It's enjoyable yeah. to do. Well, and the other thing that's interesting about this is we played, and I think the first couple of turns were very different than the last couple of turns when we had figured out all the nuances of yeah. altitude and speed and how the moves better work. So this game's going to reward you the more you play it. You're going to yeah. be able to develop strategies and understand how you should be attacking things. And to me, that's that's more the fun. It's and, and the more you it. play against the same person, the more yeah. you start getting into, oh, oh I think he's going to do yep. that, so I'm going to do this. And yep. he's thinking, he thinks he thinks I'm going to do that. So, I, yep. so then you get into all this extra stuff, which yeah. makes these kind of games where you have that blind mm -hmm. kind of the bluffing is super fun. Yeah, I, I really enjoy that kind of stuff. That's why I like this. That's why mm -hmm. I like things like X-Wing, where you get that those hidden movements, and then you do oh, it, and yeah. then you're like, oh my gosh, the board state's totally yep, different. Totally changes. i got to yep. figure out what to do. Yep. You can plan it a certain amount and yep. predict kind of what you might do, but boy. But it's... then that concept of, I put my moves down thinking this would happen, you do something different, then I have to adjust, because yeah. I'm now going after you. And I can kind of adjust, and then you don't fire to the very end. Yes. So that's another very interesting subtlety. Everybody does all their moves, and then you fire. So yep. it's, you know, sometimes you hedge your bets, and you're like, well, I'm going to go here and be safe, thinking, oh, I could have potentially two or three different targets, and then you may do something totally different. That's like, all of a sudden, I don't have anybody in front of me. Yeah. And it's, but but there is some ability to, to be flexible and change your plan after you've laid it down. But yeah, all in all, I had a blast playing this. Uh, it's I painted these up quite a while ago. Yeah. And it's just been sat on a shelf waiting for us to have time to do it. We finally got to do it, and I'm very glad that we did. I'm very glad that we played and this. It's just, it's 
fun little game, right? Pick, you're making a lot of... Pick your marauder up. We, we've we got to do a flyby. You know, it's like... And you will do I a mean, lot of this. A yeah, lot of poo-poo noises. A lot of... Well, when I killed some of your stuff, I, I, I took it and I was like playing around with it. And it's just like, that's the boy in all of us. Like the little boy. Absolutely. You know, but they're very, they're so great. They're great. They're, they're such great They're detail. generally quite sturdy as well. Yeah. Um, you The standees is another little thing. Uh, they're a little bit loose. And that's fine to an extent you have to look at the base for your orientation not the plane because there were a couple times i was i had ignored the base and i was kind of looking at my plane pointing and it had just moved a little bit so a little bit of tack in here and you're going to stick yeah. that in that's probably your best way because yeah. if you glue these um i think the marauders get a bit tall for the box and it's a bit too risky for me yeah. so i take them all apart and i've got foam in here and to kind of lay them out yeah. but you'll want a little bit of tack in here just to keep everything oriented correctly yeah. that's my little piece of advice there great models i said it i've said it three or four times it's, it's fantastic job, yeah. we were all expecting it so this is aeronautica imperialis wings of vengeance had a blast with it I fun little too. game you get everything in one box that you can kind of set up and play and mm -hmm. if you want to do this and just this it's very yeah. nice little package to do it with you can go whole hog but you don't necessarily yeah. need to right so i appreciate you guys tuning in i've been alexander from the playersaid.com and i'm grant